What's up, guys? Welcome to another exciting edition of Real Estate Podcast. This is episode 339. I'm here with Griffin. I'm here with Trev. <clears throat> and I'm still rocking my walking stick with Adam. This week we watched the two times. I almost watched the other one. Yeah. When we had right. that thing last week. He was like, what's the next one? I like, no, nah, there's another one. They put one out every year. Just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> So, uh, two towers opening scene. Oh, amazing! Man. Yeah, um, I know, I know, I said in the last episode, I was like, we're not even gonna try to, like, we're not even gonna try to, you know, compare anything to the books, like, just keep it separate. I mean, there, there's a whole fucking community of people where that's their hobby is debating these differences and shit. So, there's books for this. I'm just I'm joking. <laughs> but the, but that being said though, uh I know it gets kind of mentioned here and there, like whenever Gandalf is uh reminiscing about his fight with the Balrog. But it kind of goes into what we said last week, like how like just so much like large swaths of time and the walking and everything. Yeah. Dude, he fought that fucking thing for over a week. I mean that that battle took a week before he fucking killed it <laughs> that's fucking wild how'd he catch up to it i don't I know he just so leaned that... into the fall like skydiver <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah dude i'm like oh he there's took a his sword. shoulders oh, okay yeah where'd that sword uh, come from but the uh the wide shot of them falling you hear like oh, when the, it pulls the out and you can see the water yeah dude, dude epic when you see fuck, man. how slow they're falling you realize just how big that room is. Yeah. Because right. it's there when you see them falling, it's almost like a meteor, an asteroid. Like it's just moving so slow. I'm like, Boy. oh, when he hits that water, he's done. It's going to put him out, right? No. Gandalf, dude. It, yeah. This, the, to me, this is, this is. It's a hell of a way to open a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's and like, probably, probably one of my favorite. Probably my favorite of the three, I would say. I mean, it's <laughs> it's always been my favorite, but like I said, I haven't you know watched these in a long time, so I'm very interested to see how I feel about the third film now. You know, because I always that Helm's Deep, it's so badass, dude. Yeah, like you can't like, and it's amazing to me. Like whenever you see, because I don't get me wrong, I know that there was some CGI, you know, and all this stuff, but the fact that they were able to do this in 2000, well, they were probably shooting this in 98, 97, yeah. 98, 99, but the fact that they were able to pull off a, 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 a battle of this scale flawlessly yeah. is beyond me. Well, like I said last week, man, the more I'm watching Lord of the Rings, the angrier I'm getting at modern Hollywood. They're lazy as fuck. Like, there's no, there's no excuse. Well, they don't want to hashtag time in. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, Peter Jackson sunk 20 plus years of his life, you know, making these movies and you can see it. It's a yeah. labor of love. But Jesus Christ, man, like. There's so much, and I love how, all right, the party gets split, and we saw that happen at the end of the last flick, right? We've got mm -hmm. Aragorn and that crew going off. Dude, whenever, <laughs> all they're doing, too, is he, they're running around the corner, and then he's like, right this way, give me, come on. Like, <laughs> uh, they give him so much just, shit, you know? But, dude, I'm the adorable. romance between him and the elf. Oh, yeah, right. The romance, him like, these two love each other. Really, they, they're like, really, they're bros. Yeah, they're basically started brothers, beefing, right? but he's like, toss me. What? Yeah, well, yeah. like those those little in between moments, like that, the downtime or like in the like the 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 quips in the in the heat of battle and stuff like that. It makes those moments before those battles happen, where they're like, you know, like stand like we're gonna stand by your friends, dude. Like we're gonna we're about to throw down for you know, like yeah, like it makes that shit kind of hit a little harder, you know. Right. I mean, we got our OG little finger. A worm tongue? <laughs> Which, <laughs> worm tongue. Okay, okay. So, 
that whole sequence with the the where worm tongues got control of Theoden. Yeah. All right. Are y'all talking about the dude that does the voice for Chucky? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is that his name, Worm Tongue? Yeah, that's his oh, character okay. name. Yeah. Oh, he's a little dude. Player. Dude, he's he's Martin Broadcloak. Oh, he's, he's, Walter, he's Walter O'Dim, dude. Yeah. Like when I was saying I was like, dude, he could he could play he could play Walter's version in Eyes of the Dragon perfectly. Oh yeah, for but sure. He's fucking right. kicking the butcher out. I'm like, I don't kick butcher out. <laughs> I, I love it whenever die. whenever they show up and he's like, I told you to take a staff. What are you doing? And he's like, you, you have these naysayers coming to you. And then he rolls over. He's like, don't listen to them, my lord. <laughs> he's like <laughs> whispering in his ear. Like, it's just perfect, man. This dude looked like he was about 450 year old under a worm tongue spell. Right. He's rough. So Gandalf rolls in, into fucking River Run, saves the Jarl. I mean, they got to dip out. But, mm-hmm. dude, to be fair, though, um, Theoden, is that his name? Mm-hmm. All right. You know, they were they were kind of giving him shit. It's like, well, why don't they fight here? And it's like, dude. Look at this. You're a, yeah, you're a fucking cat, like a small village on a hill. Like, yeah, it might be easy to defend against, like, maybe 30, 40, 50 people. Yeah. But, like, he had the right idea. He's like, no, nah, we're going to Helm's Deep. Fuck this. We've It's defended us for thousands of years. Why would we not do that now? And I was like, yeah. You... yeah but see, that's one thing, though. Once they break that spell, though, Theoden's like, let's rock. Yeah, right? He's in. <laughs> it. Yeah, he's, he's like, give me an amp, you know? Like, let's fucking yeah. do this. But, like, his portrayal of a king and, like, his... Um, <clears throat> Like his decision making, the way it was written and everything was like pretty spot on because, dude, like those moments that you see him, like especially getting suited up and everything, you can see the fear and the doubt. You yeah. know what I mean? But he's the like, fact that you don't well, see that whenever he's out being a king is like perfect, you know? Yeah. And I think it's, it also, not just him, but also, um, oh man, try, I, Trying to remember their names, but um, a, a young butcher is what we'll call him for the rest of the episode or the next two. Uh, him and like, there's these moments that are paralleling to the first movie where they're like, "Man, yeah. man's fucked, dude." Like they're fucking. Yeah. There's no hope. Everything's fucking lost. God damn it, you know. Yeah. And in this movie, like you're starting to see, like there's those handful of men that that are still standing for good. You know the, the you know the little hopeful moments and shit. Yeah, it's like when old uh, Pretty Boy Elf shows up, and he's like, you oh, know, yeah. our ancestors, yeah, our ancestors fought together. You know, yeah. they're trying to, you know, we had an alliance, and and we're gonna we're gonna uphold it. And I'm like, fucking right. Well, everybody you know, realizes right? like if we don't stop these motherfuckers. Yeah, it's, it's all of, it's everybody's ass. So well, yeah, uh, so the fact that we're we're watching movies that are over twenty years old now, um, and you can still feel the relief when their homies roll up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, like that's testament to some good writing, dude. Yeah. We can't forget about Gollum. We finally get the Gollum reveal. And well, and th- that's what I was so fixing good. to go into. Yeah, Andy Serkis deserves it's his own so fucking, fucking segment. Good. Yeah. This character is written so incredible. You know what I mean? Yes. They do such a good job at making you hate, but love and, feel and bad deeply. for him. Like, yeah, yeah, and pity. And like you go through a full spectrum of emotions whenever you deal with Gollum. And then like those moments where he's talking to himself, mm-hmm. it's shots, especially the one at the end of the flick where they're, he's going on either side of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. It's where he's, oh, how it shows the, the different he, angles depending on yeah. who's talking. Yeah. Where he reveals yeah. his plot for the next yes. movie. He's like, she'll mm-hmm. kill him. Mm-hmm. We can get the precious yeah. bag. Yeah. And so the way good. that everybody treats this motherfucker too, you know, yeah. like, well, like they, they did a good job of making you, you line up with Frodo's, like yeah. uh, his actual intent because mm-hmm. even though he's being further seduced by the ring 
you still realize like he's he's he, he was one of the he's literally the only person that still sees the good in Gollum. And yeah. Jackson did a good job of making you the audience see it too. Yes. Even though everyone is like, fuck this ratchet motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Could you imagine the smell when they're like, you smell that? Yeah. Like, dude, Golem whenever, whenever he first attacks them when they're sleeping, yeah. whenever you see him, like, put his arm, when he's holding one of them, he's on his back, you know, and they're on the ground. Yeah. Like, the arm is real when they zoom in. Yeah. It's like a real arm, and it's like, it's just the CGI is amazing. It blends in very well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that scene, man, where they're fucking trying to cook those rabbits, and he's like, what are you doing to it? Like, he's yeah. like you're fucking it up. And he's like, yeah. I just need a few taters. Potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> I love like, the uh, potatoes. I love the rope. I <laughs> so love when funny. Sam's got him in the rope, man. Like, oh, it burns. I, yeah, he's like, it burns. It's not even that tight. Dude, yeah. <laughs> he comes over there and just lifts it off his head. It's like he could have done that, but he's just uh, so dramatic. The, whenever <laughs> well, he's like, like, I'm famished. <laughs> oh. it's, like, it, it's like that's literally every dog owner's <laughs> moment when the dog don't want to take the leash. The dog's like, it burns. Just, no. So fucking funny, man. He does yeah. that fucking flail at the end. There, Falls you know? down like yeah, like a kid getting told no. I mean, and then we get oh Boromir's brother showing up, dude. Whenever Boromir. you see him, like it's like he kind of looks like him. They look almost identical. Yeah, they did a really right? good like, job with the casting. Oops. Yeah, that's uh. That's a one eyed that's a one eyed Joe from three hundred at the end. Yeah. Oh shit. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. It's wild how how much they look alike. Like it's just it's wild, man. But then you kind of see I, I love how the contrast, because in Fellowship we see these beautiful these beautiful locations, these huge sweeping shots of this beautiful countryside. And then you see the con the contrast in this where it's like this shit is beyond fuck in a lot of places. Like there's well, some still, yeah. you're starting to see the decay that Sauron's infecting in the, in the world. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very, very well done, man. I, I really like the contrast. And then the, the ants, dude, I fucking dude. love the fucking tree people. Yes, so, dude. So it took me, uh, I was talking to one of my, my buddies about it. Uh, they're a big Lord of the Rings fan too, and uh, they brought up something that the same thing with me is like when I first saw this in theaters, I never noticed that little detail, but at the end of Helm's Deep, when they run them off, yeah, and they run into the forest, the fucking ants eat them. <laughs> like, yeah, they fuck them up. Yeah. They're screaming. Yeah, yeah, like I don't know well, why. They were well, and they were so mad because they've been cutting down all those trees. Because yeah. he was like, no, nah, we're not going to go there and help you boys. We got a bone to pick with the orcs. And it's like, yeah, okay, we're on the same page then. Uh, yeah. Took them all um, day to say hello. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time I see the, every time I see the ants or any of the sequences, I just hear a rush. No, no, right. <laughs> well, and I love the way that they did the animation. It's like everything else is either live action or CGI, but the way that they made the ants move and talk and facial expressions felt like it was in stop motion. Yeah. And it's fucking genius, dude, because it works. Because, like, how the fuck would a tree, a living tree, move? They captured it. Like, to a fucking T, like, in my opinion. Because, like, that that's what's always... Whenever you see them hanging off of a uh, tree beard... And like, you know, the, of course the perspective shots is really good where you see the forest moving behind them and it's swaying to the left and right and all that. But whenever he turns his head and starts to talk and stuff, the way that it almost looks like stop motion has always fascinated me. It's just, it's such, so well done, man. I love the tree beard. The rest of the ants is like my, f- and then whenever they do the assault on, uh, on Saruman's tower, like, was fucking great. Oh, dude, yeah. Throwing those big ass rocks around. The trees. You see when the one the, when the water comes in and the one that's on fire is like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's going on. laughs> yeah. And, like, uh, oh yeah, just fucking ragdolling orcs, man. Yeah. Danabonaducci. 
But this fucking Helm's Deep fight, though, man, like, it's it's so impressive. Like, on a technical level, it is one of the most impressive things that I believe has ever been shot, in my opinion. And, like, the coordination. Yeah. Like, could you fucking imagine? You know what I mean? How much time did Peter Jackson spend on this fight sequence alone? Oh, this is only weeks. <laughs> I feel like he lined his crew up and said, if you don't like Lord of the Rings, if you don't have skin in this game, get the fuck out. Yeah. (laughs) Just get the fuck out and don't waste my time. Yeah. (laughs) Man, it's, it's, it's so well. And then the way that fucking Legolas and Gimli the whole time are like their whole banter back and forth. Yeah. I just asked uh, Google and you know, it's got that little AI thing built in where it'll tell you. Yeah. How how long do y'all think it took them to film? This is just a battle at Helm's Deep. I'm going to say six months. Six months? Yeah. What do you think, Trial? Uh, I'm going to say they were going pretty relentless with their principal photography, and I'm going to say month and a half. 120 days. So four months. That's crazy. Yeah, that's... Wow. Like... 20,000 extras. It paid off? Yeah. I mean, oh, it, looks it still holds up. Yeah, it says here, yeah. 15 years later, this was in 2017, it's like, and there's still no match in anything. No. For the scene. No, nah, dude. And then, dude, Aragorn, though. You know what I mean? Like, Mr. Roll-Up, still your bitch over here. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is so like every female is so infatuated with him, which is is it's hilarious yeah. to a degree, you know. And he's only eighty seven. Yeah, he's only <laughs> he's only eighty seven. I yeah. mean, he's he's got you know he's got he's got a little bit of a peach fuzz growing in. Yeah, yeah. But like the fact that like he is supposed to like he doesn't want the responsibility of ruling shit, but he knows who he is. Definitely a leader. And, Yes, and the fact that he doesn't allow that to go to his head, where he is just like, I'm with my boys. Like, the king, the, the king's here, whatever he yeah. says, we got to do. And then whenever he needs to step up, he steps. Like, it's, dude, such a well-written character, man. Well, like that scene where they're all the way to that room, and he goes over to the king, and he's like, we just need to fucking ride out into it, man. Yeah, Let's what do are we doing? Swords out. Yeah. How much time you need. Yeah. I'm 87, dude. I got this, you know? Yeah. So cool. I mean. Oh, I was like, this chick's going to definitely bang him. I mean. She tried. He's like. But. He's like, I see the eyes of another. You know? It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Heart belongs to Liv Tyler. I get it. I have her necklace. I get, I get it. Her. Yeah. Dude, whenever they her? come in and she goes over and she's like, where's Aragorn? And he just goes, he looks up at her and he goes, fell. Yeah. I'm like, that's it? Yeah. Yeah. Just fell? <laughs> okay. When they, this is the movie that he breaks his foot in? Yeah, I think whenever so. Whenever he kicks right. that helmet, whenever they walk up to the burnt bodies, yeah, he kicks a helmet or something, kicks the ground, and he broke his foot when he did that. It's that's so how hard crazy. he kicked it in real life. And then, then he's like, wait a minute, there was a hobbit laying here. And I'm like, oh, come on, dude. <laughs> he went over here. Oh, there was a, another person. There was two hobbits. And then he cut his thing, and then they go into the forest. Don't remember what the forest was called, but Gimli's like, "Oh, what kind of what kind of fucking thing would make him go into that?" It's like I don't know all the orcs and the battling that was going on. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you see the yeah. dead bodies over there. So, yeah. what was the decision all of a sudden? Here's something I noticed: like big difference in the first movie and this movie, orcs with their personalities. They're fucking hilarious. They like have different, like, you know, he's like, oh, yeah. why can't we eat you? You know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? They like, yeah. they're completely yeah. different. Yeah. Well, I think that, I mean, they've got more time to flesh them out, yeah. I guess. I love I mean, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, he's like, he's thirsty. Give him something to drink, you know? <laughs> you more grog. I'm like, what are you drinking? Motor oil? Like, yeah. that's exactly that? what it was. <laughs> yeah. Boy, why can't we eat when that dude pops his head up? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is good. 
Perfect, man. <laughs> I mean, and Gandalf, man. Like, we can't forget about Gandalf. <sighs> like, the true he fights, light. He, yes. He fights the Balrog and then rolls up and he, he's like, I've been talking with an old friend. And you see, you know. He's like, no, no. He, he rolls up and he's like, they're like, Gandalf, we thought you died. He goes, no, nah, dude, I was pulled out of space and time. Yeah. I'm back, bitches. Yeah. Like, went to the cleaners, like, got a white robe. George Harris of the song, I came back. <laughs> <laughs> that whole battle, I'm like, because I forget I'm watching the extended. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that whole battle, I'm like, where the fuck is Gandalf at, man? <laughs> like, where the fuck is this guy? Yeah. He shows up. And shows On up. On the dude. horse. Dude. No shot they're running down that hill on those horses. No shot. <laughs> yeah, no. Way too steep. Way too steep. It's so it like steep a burnt ramp. and it's like a drop off. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, they would all fall. Like that horse would be like, uh-uh. Such a great movie. I'm super excited about Return of the King. I mean, yeah. it's been so long, dude. I, I watched Two Towers and Fellowship more than Return of the King. Not because Return of the King was bad. It was just because the hype. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. So, went ahead and did a little due diligence. And once Two Towers went off, I just cut Return of the King on. I'm starting the last hour of it. I wanted Forgot. to. I wanted to keep yeah. it on. Hey. Like, Forgot but there's so much how, movie. I'm like, dude, you had that. That's a that's a fucking understatement, bro. <laughs> a fucking understatement. Each hour is its own fucking movie, dude. <laughs> well, this one's over four hours, right? Yeah, four and a half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shorter yeah, yeah. credits. We got yeah, some credits yeah. down this time. From, yeah. I think a lot of people <clears throat> they had in that because they all worked on the movies. Yeah. Plus. A lot of those credits were like people that helped with the 10 years design. Mm -hmm. Like, well, everybody had to get there, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. His name wasn't I, in the credits. Oh, it's the extended version. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm under the assistant to the assistant guy for. Incredible move. Like, so far. I'm just like, I'm going to have to put these in rotation, like yearly rotation. You know what I mean? Not bothering I mean, me. Watch them, dude. No. Yeah, like, I'm pretty... not, it's not like a, when I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, this is a chore. No, Some not. Some movies at all. feel that way. Yeah. And the whole, I'm just sitting a, here loving this. Like, yeah, a total enjoyment to revisit. And I think I prefer the extended. Yeah. So, well, like, I, I, I'm, I really don't know what's I mean, been added, but. <laughs> I to think me, it's that's just, just a, you know extra stuff I, like well like you know how you scenes. know how yeah just well, like for instance like it might it might show a couple people say one or two extra lines they probably yeah. didn't in the theatrical cut like but to me adding all that in there it fleshes out those scenes between where like all right we're gonna focus on New Zealand shots and battles and then we're gonna cut to everybody sitting around powwow and like it. I don't know, it lets you chew on what the fuck they 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 just said because they're just they're throwing dialogue at your ass left and right. Well, whenever yeah. I looked that up about the Helms Deep, how long they shot and everything, it said that he had to cut it down. It had twenty hours of footage. I want uh, that cut. Yeah, yeah. the, the twenty Deep hour edition. Helms Deep. That would have to be so hard. Oh yeah, right. To sit around and go through all and just find the best of the best and. Well, they, well, Gandalf told him is like on the fifth day at dawn or something, right? So they they were fighting for days straight, right? Yeah, I mean Jesus Christ. Yeah, I would. This is what I, like I would put the Helm's Deep sequence up there with Saving Private Ryan D Day. Oh yeah, like absolutely. Those are some of the best shot war segments that's ever been put on screen. And I love two the different design genres of it. Oh yeah, right. The way that it's all, and the way that it's set up, where well, if they get through here, yeah, you go back to here and hold it. You know, and he's like, get them to the keep. So, yeah. uh, 
there's i mean obviously there's like four hours of movie left but there's there's still some there's some peak shots to be had guys i'm ready for it like i just the level like the comments that you guys are making about this one obviously bleeds over into that into next week and uh yeah it's just it's it's incredible that after so many years these movies are still unmatched in a lot of technical categories yeah like when you like watching them it like when they came out and you saw where they won their awards and stuff you're like all right yeah because they were it was the new shiny thing so you're like of course it's gonna fucking win yeah but now with a lot of time and 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 stuff under the belt with it and it's it's got to sit and stew for a while you go back and you watch it and you're like dude worth every like it deserved every fucking award it got yeah and there's so much stuff that's trying to live up to what what these movies were able to do you know what i mean mm-hmm. it, it's aesthetically from video games to tv everything's been in the shadow of this like and it's crazy because that's you know it's it's the same argument when you think about like fantasy literature yeah everything's in the shadow of Tolkien yeah uh and they've managed to translate that to film and hold the same standard yeah and I think and I haven't watched any of it of course but I think that like whenever you set yourself up to do a Lord of the Rings series on Amazon you have mm. a lot to live up to just because of that name alone. You know, yeah, it doesn't have, matter if you drop in twenty million of an episode. Yeah. When you I only mean, have you money access to, day, but when you only have access to thirty nine pages of source material. Yeah. Do y'all think Peter Jackson like watched it? He had to watch it, right? To see oh yeah, it. of course. Yeah. He's like, Was this rubbish? Yeah. Well, is this bullshit? <laughs> the moon landing was better. It's yeah. probably, it, it was probably the, the rainiest, b- most boring Tuesday he ever had. He's not as weird as Kubrick, but he's kind of our Kubrick, dude. Yeah, really. Like if you right. had to pick someone that shoots stuff like that, just that. And he's his, strange. His shots, he's, are am- his shots are amazing, dude. He's like a filmmaker's filmmaker. Like, this, yeah. Like, and just, I mean, just to. Just let it sink in. The guy that made these movies gave us gave us the lawnmower zombie scene from Dead Alive. Yeah, right. Same motherfucker, dude. I mean, give him all the money. Yeah, give him all the money. Incredible. (laughs) It's it's just it's incredible, man. Hats off to him. Like he's gonna like he's he's forged a legacy. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, there's a reason why he don't really have to make movies unless he wants to. Well, like the Beatles yeah. thing. He's yeah. like, sure, yeah. I'll come through that hundred hours of footage and make an eight hour thing. Yeah. Why not? I like the Beatles. Just for shits and gigs. Well, some of the well, he's he's kind of he he's taking he the same thing what with, was it World War Two footage? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah. shall not grow old. Um, he he's like where George Lucas kick started a, a lot of innovation and in movie making with ILM. Mm-hmm. Peter Jackson's done the same thing. I'd argue with Wingnut. Yeah, absolutely. And this is I mean, the guy, I'm giving... was it Meet the Feebles or the? Yeah, I mean, this the is the guy that came from that. Yeah, and some other movie we watched that was just far out there. Like, I can't remember what it was, but it was like, what is this? <laughs> well, in in a in a in a roundabout way, all of those older movies he did in horror and stuff like that, it made him the perfect fit. Yeah, it's like you know you realize like he he's like. He's just another guy like us that enjoyed stuff like this and fucking had the money, resources, and 
blessed with the eye to do it. Oh, when he got his foot in the door. Yeah. Well, and, and how many people, I mean, let's be real. How many directors, how many writers, how many anybody are going to sink decades of their life no. into a property that they don't own? Well, at the, at the time, at the time these movies were, were coming out and everything, you know, it was I did it like you know, it's it you know it was unfilmable. You couldn't yeah, yeah. you couldn't pull something that large of of, of a scope. Then he saw Jurassic know? Park and was like, "We can do it now." Yeah, <laughs> and he he was like Spielberg, hold hold my beer. Wow, dude, fucking wow! I'm giving it a full star. For full sure. star. Gets Can't wait coveted, to watch the next one. It gets the coveted real estate golden third tower. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll get to the coveted real estate dark tower, but you know, until we get there. <laughs> it's always on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. Loki. Oh. Mm. Mm mm mm. Yeah. It, is this is this the end of Tom Hiddleston as Loki? In like a story capacity, probably. What did you say a statement, Trav? He's gonna show up probably in Secret Wars or something, right? He or was maybe. in he was on Fallon, I think, and he said this could this was what did he say this was the conclusion of his fourteen year journey. Yeah. I mean Hey, if the guy don't come back, hey. He gave us a good. He gave us a damn good. I would run. rather that happen than them try to phone something in. It's like, no, nah, if you yeah. got something cool, yeah. Like if you're gonna bring back he who remains or whatever his name was, uh, that's one because it's like that was. They're like everyone was like, oh fucking Disney really fucked herself by having this guy in their movie, and they're like, hold my beer, dude. Yeah, dude, right. Because now he doesn't exist, right? Dude, him him walking out towards the destroyed bloom and his his big suit reveal. Yeah. Fuck, that was awesome. He's grabbing all the branches. Yeah. It was he, he, I like, couldn't I couldn't sorry, have asked man. for a better No, I just I couldn't have asked for a better ending than that. You know what I mean? Like just I I didn't know I had no expectations going into it, of course, but like after watching it and everything, it's just like, dude, what the fuck? You know, like, well, it's, it, it's, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of makes me want to go like Marvel. What the fuck, dude? Like you, you, you've been having that going on the whole time. Like, yeah. Where, yep. like, where's, where's the rest of that shit at? Like, well, I'm yeah. glad that guy's doing the movie because mm -hmm. this dude right. knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen like there's only a handful of movies out there that that pull off the the loop, like you know, you know what I mean. Where like you'll we're constant time traveling, hopping to other places you've already yeah. seen like just revisiting sets and everything and kind of broadening the image more and stuff like loki did that within 50 minutes and just stomped so many other like films that that pull that shit yeah right up i mean even i even love the idea where it was like <laughs> uh how long would it take to learn to learn physics it's like you know forever or whatever and it's like centuries, centuries later yeah. <laughs> and he just rolled up he's like all right guys i mean he tried everything yeah he tried stopping her doing this doing that and he, like and no matter what he was like i'm not gonna kill her yeah. i'll just take the seat like i it's, it's hard to be a god dude like yeah I mean, legitimately he's like i know what i gotta do god. my life was yeah. spared for this what makes you wonder yeah. too is like the way that he was wrote in, like, cause he got pulled in the TVA and then this whole time, like he kept the way that, uh, the dude at the end of the time kept pausing it. And he's like, you figured it out yet? You know what you got? That was do? badass. 
It was almost like yeah. he was wanting him to do it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was like, you well, know what you got to do, right? Like, how many times have you tried this? Figured it out. It was. I know it sounds weird, but uh, the way this finale kind of plays out and puts the whole like Loki story in pers- in perspective, and I know this is very left field, but man. I think they could pull off a Chrono Trigger movie. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you'd have to have the right people, of course. I mean, I mean, uh, all, yeah, all that kind of shit, of course. But I mean, like, because Loki worked, and audiences were able to be like, okay, I, I'm all right. I, they were able to follow what was going on. Yeah, because you could make that that game story. You know, it follows similar beats, like. You go to the end of time and it's like, hey, you can either go straight to the end or do you want to do some other shit before you do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, at the at the end of when everything's said and done, um, Renslayer is on Loki World, right? That's what it looks like. With the With remnants that... of the TVA, the old yeah. TVA. Yeah. So what do you guys uh, think? Do you think Aelith got her or do you think she, do you think that's a, all right, that's a good placeholder until we need her again. I think yeah, he I put feel... her there. That's what I thought. Yeah. But I, I think that they're just keeping her there in their back pocket because, like, if Kang does show up, like, let's say there's two scenarios here. Do we continue with Kang? Do we pivot to Dr. Doom? Either way, if they yeah. continue with Kang, then she's there and Kang will have access to her if he needs her. Whereas if they pivot to Dr. Doom, then she's in a Loki world, you know, basically doing her thing out there, you know, like trying to survive and all that stuff. So to it was a safe place to put her. We know Mobius will be popping back up in uh, Deadpool. So he'll be, he'll be back there, which I have a feeling that like Deadpool will probably have like the Sylvie conversation happens and he's like, I'm just going to stay here for a while. And then in my mind, Deadpool shows up right after that. And is like, we got to fucking do some crazy shenanigans. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but like, what's going to happen with Sylvie now? Is she just going to piss off and go work at McDonald's in the eighties? You know, like, or is she going to try to get him back? Well, and, oh, and the you know thing I mean? is, it's like, and if you really look at everything, Loki has became the thing that she ha- she's hated most. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we we talked about this for her, though. Yeah, I know, but she's never going to understand that. No. You know what I mean? Like she's so well, dead. But if you remember though, that the, the part of her arc was her change of heart as well. Because it took because it took her seeing her world get destroyed. Yeah. Before she came out, she's like, all right, fucking let's do this. But But then the problem is that the old version of her always kills him. Well, and and here's the thing. If they, like, this is my only complaint, but it's not really a complaint because of the outcome that we did get. But he, he time slips back to the moment whenever the entire world is breaking apart, pauses time. Let's her experience that happen. Stops time, rewinds time, has a conversation. And she's like, I'll keep doing it forever if I have to. Like, her character arc was, has never been fulfilled because, like, she has, she's had a change of heart, but not for real. Because if she really gave a shit, she would tell Loki to kill her. Well, and, and, and you're right. But I think it also probably taps into the whole idea that, like, she's a Loki and the thing they they've told us both seasons all throughout is that Loki, like you lose, yeah. you never get to have your victory. And even, cause even though Loki technically won at the end, he still didn't really. because like because he now, saved the day, but he stuck now he's the, the, yeah, he's the lonely yeah. God now or whatever, whatever you want Just to call it. holding things. Well, Can't not only is right. he, not only is he the lonely god, but he just allowed a multiversal war to happen. On the words of Sylvie being like, let us try to fight. And it's like, bitch, 
we've tried this in the past and it didn't fucking work out. <laughs> so what makes you think that this time's going to be any better under these new circumstances? Well, like I, the- I know that it's fine. I know it's going to all play out and everything's going to be okay. But if I'm Loki in that moment when I pause time and she's like, I'll fucking never stop, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you're a selfish fucking bitch. Like, I would have went would off you have killed her? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck yeah, I would have killed her. Well, I think the contingency here is that Loki, Loki now being in place of the loom itself and being the more or less he who remains, of course, the whole thing was is like they still they still created the TVA to where it's a volunteer basis. If people want to leave, they can. Like people are all aware of their shit, you know. Yeah. And the whole thing with them, because if you remember, they sit that file on Mobius's desk where they're like, you know, they're hunting down Kang variants. Yeah. Which leads to my Nick pick, which is it's not. It doesn't cheapen it, doesn't it doesn't suck or anything. But they ended Loki the same way they ended Wanda's arc. Yeah. Wanda's and now Wanda... in a position, jumping through multiverses, snuffing out dark holds. Loki's now in a place controlling multiverses, sniffing out canes. It's the same ending. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But I, but I, but the thing with, with him. Because, see, I didn't look at it as him choosing the multiversal war because of that. Because, like, the whole thing was that he found another way. So he chose option C. We're going to have a a multiverse, but we're going to just keep Kang, the threat, the Kang threat at bay. And any kind of version of him that's going to even remotely catch whiff of, like, oh, I'm really fucking smart at fucking science, they're going to nip it in the bud. Yeah, and I mean, it makes it, and it makes sense that a villain would be the one over that because a villain people can be like, all right, yeah, let it let them kill somebody. It wouldn't well, exactly be a good position for a hero to be in, of course. Well, the the way that I interpreted the end of it was like, he who remains was like, if you destroy the loom, it will open everything up, and there will be a multiversal war that the likes that nobody's ever seen. So the way that I interpreted everything was he who remains was the one who remained after like basically put the TVA and everything in its place. So this is a loop. This has already happened before. So like Mm -hmm. with Loki being there, like I, I wasn't under the impression that he was sniffing any Kings. Like he, he of course is going to be kind of like monitoring things in his own way. But with like the conversation that he had with Sylvie, where she's like, let us try this time. And it's like, okay, so we're going to, you know, these timelines that she was so hell bent on trying to save, they're going to subject these people to possible full, full deletion. Like the TVA did, if not worse, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I don't know. It's, like well, I said, I, I'm, but, but I, I'm I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like the ending was clear, though, man. Like they're yeah, they're letting the timelines go. Like I think it was a bit of like Loki trying to please everybody because they're all because that's the thing. They're not going to necessarily prune the entire timeline. They're they're going to prune the Kings. Like it's it's almost like like that. I feel like there's more to that than just you know what I mean. Yeah. Cause that, cause that whole sequence there near the end, I felt like that's what that was explaining is that the TVA is here, but they're not to cancel out timelines anymore. They're, they're, they're trying, they're going to contain the Kang threat and right. let all these different variants try to have an existence. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I get that and everything, but all, like, but I, it, I it doesn't, it still doesn't, it, but the one thing though, that it doesn't resolve because even though even though Kang the Conqueror, his first iteration's been destroyed in Ant Man, and the two other pivotal Kang variants are more or less fucking dead as well. I got something. It still, there. it still doesn't add, or it still we still haven't resolved the fact that all the Kangs have already gotten together. Like they're already like, yeah. And so that's what he pruned that world they were in. Well, they were meeting like out of time though. 
kind of. Oh. At least that was my interpretation. That's, that's the whole thing about that arena, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that the whole thing about like the Council of Kings? Like they call it to where they're outside of time and shit. Like that's, I, yeah, I think so. I, I can't remember if that's a comic thing or not. Yeah. I got this though. I remember last week I was like, I kept waiting. Like I may have mentioned it before, but like uh, Renslayer being a variant mm-hmm. of Kang. Like, is that his Sylvie? Right. And it still makes me think maybe they did put her there. Because why is she so important? Why not just kill yeah, her? Ex- yeah, exactly. You know? But the way they put her there, it's like, they put, it's like, all right, we got a placeholder here. Yeah. If this court case works out, we're good. <laughs> but if not, yeah, we've got our cane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she I is important that. for yeah. some reason. Whenever. Miss Bennett's was like, well, I could really tell you something that'd make you mad. Yeah. You know. Well, well, something that would be, uh, uh, yeah, that, yeah, because they never, they never explained nah, it. I never us, said it. Said. You're that right. was at the end of that episode, and then it just, that was it. And it was like, and I just kept thinking, because it was like, well, there's, you know, like he's got Sylvie. Yeah. Why wouldn't Kang have a, why wouldn't there be a chick version? There's yeah. got to be. Mm hmm. I mean, Loki, there was a fucking crocodile Loki. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, but no, like, like I said, I'm not uh, upset with the way that the movie ended or anything like that, or the movie, the show ended. I like where, where Loki's at. I like his sacrifice that he made to make all that stuff happen. Like, but it, t- like we've got Renslayer and her own little pocket thing. We got the TVA doing their thing. Mobius is going to be partying up with Deadpool and then, We'll see what happens to him after that. And then, like, you've got Sylvie. And she's the wild card. Now, look, if they bring her in and it's like, okay, this is the new Loki, and it's like, okay, cool, whatever. Like, either way, I don't care. But, like, I still feel like they need to do something more with that character because, I, to me, her arc hasn't been fully realized. Yeah, she can't yeah. just go oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think that the only way that her arc is going to be realized is if Kang kills her. Well, and then I, I, and I've been wondering if that's going to be one of the dominoes, if she's going to be one of the dominoes falling that either unleashes Kang again, like for real, or if it's going to set up a situation where, because it was something me and uh, Corey were talking about at work. And it would be interesting if Kang is trying to break out and maybe he does for a few minutes. And everyone's like, Oh shit. Well, so much for containment. Yeah. And then just out of nowhere, Kang is just completely blown the fuck out by Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom takes his temp pad tech incorporates some of his shit, you know, cause the whole mm-hmm. thing with doom is that he steps ahead of motherfuckers. Yeah. And, you know, at least, at least knowing that, like, if, if that finale indicated anything is that the hard pivot to doom is real and it's happening. Well, but here's the thing that they could do. And this is something that I've been thinking about last couple of days. Like, Kang is a descendant of Tony Stark, right? Well, one of his versions, yeah. There's a version of him that's a descendant of Tony Stark. There's another version that's a descendant of, uh, uh reed richards like yeah so like here's the easiest way to wrap all of this stuff up at least from my perspective to wrap all of this stuff up where you get the same threat you don't have to rehash anything you don't have to retcon anything you have kang as dr doom oh Like, what's stopping them from... Like, a version of Kang in some world is going by Victor Von Doom, and, like, he... Ah. Like you said... What if that's... What if that version of the Fantastic Four is the ones we're getting, or the ones we're... They're, like, they dealt with Kang already, but it was, like, their fucking kid. Yeah. Because, I mean, Kang has always been a Fantastic Four villain. To some degree, you know, mm-hmm. he's yeah. popped up, he's popped up here, there and yonder. But like, to me, he's always been very either Iron Man or Fantastic Four adjacent, you know, 
And to yeah. me, it's like, you, you can nip that in the bud. You can have Dr. Doom be a descendant of insert someone here, what, however they want to do it. And like, he is the Kang. He is that world's version of Kang. And he's the one going around and destroying all the other versions of Kang. And then you get that whole gray area, just like with Thanos, where it's like, if he's going around and he's destroying worlds before those Kangs be can become mature enough to start destroying those worlds, is he really doing something bad? It's the whole TVA situation yeah. all over again. So like, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Does he get his God powers somehow? Sure. Why not? Like battle world happens. Like, I mean, they could do all of that stuff and they could easily pivot to where it's like, here's Kang, but he's got a mask on. He's Dr. Doom now. Well, if and they do that, the then they can save the other Dr. Doom for later. Yeah. Well, Cause that's like a since, big, big bad, right? Like God Doom. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, well, since we're, we since we're still talking about doctors though, uh, mm. last time we saw Doctor Strange, he was going through a rip in space time. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, how, how's that shit gonna factor in too? Like, yeah. And then, I mean, they've almost confirmed to some degree that like Deadpool is going. There's going to be worlds collapsing that he's going to be jumping through, to a point where he winds up at like maybe our, you know, real world quote unquote timeline, you know, because of the Fox, they, there's pictures of like collapsed Fox signs and things like that. And some of those set pictures. So like, who knows what Ram, because something there's going to be a ripple effect. And that's the thing, I guess, looking at this logically, whenever you're looking at the whole story with like Sylvie and Loki and everything, it's going to take one tiny pebble to set all this shit off. And there's way too many variables when you have an infinite number of universes. There's way too many variables that can throw stones to cause this ripple effect to happen. And, you know, and that's why, like, if I'm in the Loki situation, I'm not even wasting time. Sure, I'll try to learn physics and quantum computing and all that stuff. That don't work. I'm going to the main source and I'm nipping that in the bud. I'm saying my farewells. I'll see you in, on the other side. and. I mean, hey, well, what, as, what if <laughs> well, I, well, Adam had just dropped the Loki poster and well, that hits different now. That. Well, it got me thinking I'm about dropping. this. It got me thinking as well, man. Uh, what if because I know in some articles they're referring to Loki now as like God of stories. Mm -hmm. Well, like what if whenever, you know, whenever he's needed to be shown again or some sort of interaction or whatever, what if he's the beyonder? That would make sense. I and would be okay we, with that. Yeah. That's how we get God Emperor doom. Yeah. Like, well, when I saw that chair, I'm like, doom has like, at some point doom has to show up here, kill Loki and take control of all this shit. Right. And merge all this shit together. And mm -hmm. it's going to fuck everything up. So that's that's the only thing that I could think of whenever I saw that. So and that is and that is straight up out of the most recent run of Secret Wars, which would make the most sense to adapt. Mm -hmm. I mean, because yeah. I, I feel like I feel like the Infinity Saga was the 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 set of films where it's like, all right, let's let's throw in a bunch of like real classic story stuff and building and everything. Now they can kind of be like, all right, we're just going to pull for more modern continuity. And, you know, because, I mean, some of these books have been redone, uh, you know, several times over. Yeah. I mean, and, and my thing, too, is like the OG Secret War, like you're not really going to get anything out of that. If you pull yeah. the heroes and villains into some alternate reality where they have to fight each other for the amusement of one individual... Like, that's a good one and done, you know, movie, but what does that feed into on the well, grander scale of things? Oh, well, nothing at all, because it's, it would, it would absolutely just be a member berry thing. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, hey, 50 year old guy, I remember when you were 18 and read this issue and 19, yeah. whatever, Damn you know, like, well. yeah. I mean, no, if they I do, know, I know, I know, I know Disney's, you know, they, they like, they like fucking, they like throwing that shit at us, but 
you know, you got to draw the line at some point where it's like, all right, we need to kind of appeal to the generations that are still coming into the theater. Yeah. So, but man, what a season, like the, Loki is the the best written thing on Disney Plus. The best hands down. Yes. Out of everyone. And yeah. And this just cements it to me. Loki should be required viewing. All the other stuff on Disney Plus, not really. I mean, you can get by without, like, maybe WandaVision for Doctor Strange specifically, but like, a lot of that stuff you can ignore look over bypass, but I feel like Loki is required viewing. And if they pivot to Dr. Doom and get rid of um, Kang, then they're either going to a have to recap what happened in Loki for general audiences moving forward, or B they're going to have to let people know, Hey, you have to watch Loki to understand what's happening. You know? So we'll see though. I love it, man. Loved it. It's it's such a great show. Everybody and like, I mean, I want a Mobius show. Yeah, you know, Tom Hiddleston. Need, that's uh, shit. Yeah, I need I need, I need this show on Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, right. I agree. Like it deserves to be a shelf sitter. Yeah, both seasons in a Miss Minutes clock. Yeah, you know I was what I mean. Say like some kind of clock. Yeah, Give me that's com- even better. Yeah. What'd be really pack. cool is if it was digital and you could plug it up. Oh and my the God. face would change. <laughs> yeah. Which season you want to watch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, crazy yeah. clock lady. It'll like talk to you while you're watching it. It syncs up with yeah. it. It's like this is my favorite mm-hmm. part. Yeah. <laughs> it's like every time she pops up on screen. This <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we're After watching. The, uh... <laughs> After the Ren Slayer thing, where it's like, you're not going to like it. And when it's over, she's going to go, sorry about that plot hole there. Yeah. <laughs> well, like she gives you, a, she gives you like Miss Minutes commentary. Like Tara Strong does an entire DVD commentary. As a Bluetooth speaker, basically. <laughs> now, I wasn't in this scene, but if you want to know how they pulled it off, yeah. I got a little BTS press access. A, do you remember how they used to press a button? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, something would come up. You could push it; it would go to a thing about it. If yeah. you can find the hidden menu icon, you'll find some good stuff. I mean, you want some movie news, real quick? Yeah. All right. So, starting off here, Netflix canceled Masters of the Universe movie could be reborn at Amazon's MGM. So, Masters of the Universe fans still holding out hope of seeing the mighty He-Man's live-action return may still get their wish, as it seems the now-defunct Netflix adaptation of the 80s icon could be moving to another studio, Amazon-owned MGM. According to a new report by Yahoo, MGM are now in a line to take the rights to the toy-based action hero and bring He-Man and the Masters of the Universe to screens with the same team as previously set by Netflix. The history of Masters of the Universe reboot has been the very definition of development hell. Having been in the works for over a decade, the prolonged attempt to revive the franchise in uh, in its first live-action iteration since Dolph Lundgren wielded the power sword back in 1987 has seen numerous writers, directors, and even potential lead stars come and go as development dragged on. Most recently, Kyle Allen was reported to be set to take on the iconic role with the Knee Brothers directing and co-scripting the movie with David Cal- Callahan. Callahan. However, back in July, just when it seemed that the movie was finally guaranteed to move forward, Netflix, Netflix pulled the plug, disappointing many fans. However, Netflix loss could be MGM's gain, as the studio would reportedly be looking to do something Netflix were not planning on, putting He-Man back on the big screen. Additionally, if this deal is going to come to fruition, it would most likely mean the project would be arriving sooner rather than later, as in 2026, a deal between current rights owners DreamWorks Animation and toy maker Mattel that allows adaptations to be shopped to other studios could end in three years. So, I think that they were banking on creating this He-Man-verse with the animated series. 
And, and since it didn't pan out too well, I don't even, th- did it get picked up for another season? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. So I think that, you know, because that didn't pan out exactly the way that they were anticipating it, they kind of was like, yeah, maybe we should go back to the drawing boards on this whole E-Man sitch. And now, I mean, look, if MGM and Amazon gets a hold of it, I mean, at least there'll be some type of live action version of He-Man. But look, I'm not clamoring for live action He-Man personally. You know what I mean? Like I could give or take it, you know, if they decide to do it, I think it could be done well. And I think it could be done and be made incredibly fun, of course. But like, I'm not lining up at the, you know, it did get two seasons. Okay, well, so, when did the last season come out? Was it like 2020? 2021, November. Okay. So, they both I mean, came it's out the same year. Okay. Just well, yeah, because there was a split. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, really 10 but, episodes, I mean. Yeah. And I remember that there was a split. People binge watched the first half, raised hell about it. And then Kevin Smith and his crew's like, but those, the, it's not done yet. There's a whole nother half of it. But like, I think the damage had been done at that point, you know? But like I said, I'm not, I'm not clamoring for He Man. I mean, if we get one, then sure, why not? You know? Yeah, be cool. So Zell's in the news here. Denzel Washington to play Hannibal and, 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 Antoine Fuqua's next film for Netflix. Um, Fuqua and one of his favorite actors, Academy Award winner Denzel Washington, will team up once again for the director's next big project for Netflix. Now that the actor strike has finally come to an end after 118 days and weeks of negotiation between, between SAG-AFTRA and the AMPTP, uh, several of the films and series that were on hiatus are beginning to reveal n- news regarding their casts and filming. Uh, Fuqua's next movie is one of them. After a few months, nope, a few months after the premiere of his latest title, The Equalizer 3, the acclaimed director confirmed his next project that will reunite him with the star of the action saga. Deadline broke the news on Monday that Washington has been cast as the ancient um, Carthaginian general. Hannibal in the film, which currently has no title. The script will be written by three-time Oscar nominee John Logan, who wrote great titles such as Gladiator, The Aviator, Hugo, uh, and Spectra, among many others. The outlet also shared an official description of the movie. The film covers the pivotal battles he led against the Roman Republic during the Second Punic War. Fuqua and Washington worked, first worked together on the classic crime thriller Training Day and reunited on The Magnificent and three installments of the popular action franchise The Equalizer, whose latest installment was released earlier this year. The film, as well as the two previous ones, was uh, very well received. Last year, Fuqua teamed up with another streaming platform, Apple TV, for the historical drama Emancipation, starring Will Smith. Washington, for his part, had taken a brief uh, break after releasing three films in 2021, The Little Things, Tragedy of Macbeth, and A Journal for Jordan. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. Yeah. I mean, Hannibal. That's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy, dude. I've never seen him really play anything like that. No, nah, but I think that he, dude, I'd never seen him do anything like Macbeth, but like. No, yeah. Sheesh, you know, like it's such a great adaptation of that story. So I'm interested to see how this, and it's cool that, um, Fuqua, you know, did Training Day, The Magnificent, yeah. and then The Equalizer, which I haven't watched any of the equal, Equalizer movies, but, that you last know. one was pretty good. I, was so, good, I'm interested to see how well his his style translates to, like, a historical biopic, you know what I mean? So, we'll see. We'll see. All right, Taika Waititi reveals he will not be involved in Thor 5. I wonder why. If Marvel Studios is developing a fifth installment of Thor, as recent rumors indicate, it seems that they won't be able to count on Taika Waititi to bring the God of Thunder to the big screen again because of the director's other priorities. Hemsworth's Thor made his Marvel Cinematic Universe debut way back in the first phase of the comic book franchise with the Kenneth Brog, no, Kenneth Branagh-directed movie arrived in 2011. 
Uh, the sequel, Thor The Dark World, arrived in 2013 with Alan Taylor at the helm. However, the film was not very well received, which led Marvel Studios to look for a new approach for the character for which they brought Watiti in. 2017, Ragnarok was released, delivering a 180-degree turn for the character and his franchise, presenting a story with a more humorous and dynamic tone and a large helping of Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner, the Hulk, to boot. The change to Thor's tone did not go well, go down well with everyone, but the film ended up becoming one of the most successful solo movies of the MCU and by far the highest rated Thor outing. Last year, maintaining continuing a less serious tone, Thor Love and Thunder was released, despite bringing back Natalie Portman as Jane Foster and adding the talent of Christian Bell as the villain Gore the God Butcher, the film failed to bring the thunder and was not well received. However, following the release of the movie, it appeared that Watiti was up for another round with Hemsworth, but it seems that will not be the case. Speaking with Insider to promote his upcoming, fl upcoming film, Next Goal Wins, the filmmaker addressed his involvement in a potential fifth installment. I wouldn't know if that's accurate. I know that I won't be involved. I'm going to concentrate on these other films that I've signed on for. So, and then it goes into what his next projects are. So you've got Akira, you've got his Star Wars flick, you've got a bunch of things that he's signed on for. Is this a bad thing? No. I don't think so, right? Like, don't get me wrong, Ragnarok was great. You know, it was a tone shift for Thor, It was, but it was great. Love and Thunder, on the other hand, was a little less than favorable. The missing Um Yes. And I think that, you know, to me, this is my own personal thoughts on this. Like, you bring Watiti in, and he kind of opens up the possibilities of what the Thor character is. And, like, I feel like if we got similar versions of Thor like that in the past, would it still be as great of a movie as it is? Because we've got the first Thor movie where, you know, he's on Earth, he doesn't have his powers, new man, you know, new man in a new land kind of storyline. Then you've got the Dark World, which is dark. Like, it's a dark flick, for especially for Marvel. And then the lighthearted tone of Ragnarok comes in. If we would have had that consistent tone that Waititi set forth, would it have been as good as it is? I mean, the Hulk did have a lot to do with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, Goldblum and the whole cast had a lot to do with that. Loki, of course. Um, so I think that him, like him setting the precedence of like, hey, this is what Thor could be. And this is kind of like how Thor in a way should be to a certain degree. I think if somebody else gets in there and really takes the reins of it, I think we could get us another great Thor movie out of it, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and dude, remember he was like, I need to take some time off. Like my head hurts or something. He had something wrong. Yeah. His nose was bleeding or something. So. But I mean, hey, if we get another Thor movie, I'm like, I, I fully intend on Thor showing back up for some of this other Marvel stuff that's happening, you know? Mm -hmm. And they oh, may yeah. end up killing him off, you know? Like, who knows? But, like, we'll, we'll see. Hemsworth, ain't, he's not done. He's going to, I think he's going to milk this pony as long as he can, you For know? Sure. I, I don't blame I would. him. Yeah. So, Loki producer says Jonathan Major's arrest had no impact on latest MCU appearance. So, Marvel Studios have been having a rough time recently with interest and their sprawling franchise not quite at the same levels as it used to be. While a long way from being a disaster, there have been some outside events that have contributed to the uncertain surroundings the MCU's multiverse saga. One of these anomalies is the current legal situation surrounding one of the most uh, integral stars, Jonathan Majors, who plays the omnipresent Kang in the current story arc. Recently, Kang returned in Loki season in Lozic... Recently, Kang returned in Loki Season 2, but with that arrival came many rumors and whispers about his role being pulled back. Marvel Studios considered moving away from his character and a host of other unsubstantiated stories. Following the finale of Loki, the show's producer, Kevin Wright, has spoken out about Major's role in the series and how his arrest last year did not impact the story told in Loki. During an interview with Screen Rant, Wright addressed 
the many suggestions uh, that more versions of Kang were originally meant to appear in the second season of the Tom Hiddleston-led series. Despite claims of the reduced role for majors, Wright made it clear that the version of Kang seen in the show were the only ones ever intended to be there. He explained, No, it was always timely. Our big trick up our sleeves was you were going to see He Who Remains, just uh, not just in flashbacks, but that he would come back properly. So no, the Council of Kings and Quantumania was shot as additional photography as we were making season two. So that was so that kind of came separate after we had finished writing, and it was cool. But no, there was never any other versions of Kang, so I don't know where that came from. It was always just about playing our character in our our characters in our story. Nothing that felt too connected to the bigger other stories felt wrong for us. Uh, while there have been many reports of Marvel Studios considering swapping out Kang with another Marvel villain like Doctor Doom in the wake of Jonathan Major's arrest for an alleged domestic violent incident back in March, Loki's Kevin Wright explained that the actor's legal entanglement had no impact on his role in the show. This is what he had to say. No, nothing affected our finale. I think I said elsewhere earlier when the show was first coming out, the story that is on screen is the one that we set out to make remarkably so no one was coming down telling us uh, we had to connect or set up something for the future. It was sort of finish our story that we started. When it comes to the upcoming Kang intensive projects of the MCU's Phase 6 plans, Wright admits that he does not know how things will play out, but hopes to see the multiverse saga come to a conclusion as was originally intended. This is what he had to say about that. As far as where it's all going, I can't say, and not because I'm being coy, we're not part of those projects. What I would say is, I mean, I know Michael Waldron is working on them, and he he loves, obviously, this world as he helped create it. And no, I mean, the threat that we establish at the end of this multiversal war will come. Sylvia is just saying, let us have a chance. So I hope that, that people continue to run with that, because I would love to see what that story is. So it's good to know, you know, Mm -hmm. good to know. But I mean, you, I mean, they kind of like, they did the origins. They did the whole Victor timely thing, you know? And I never really sat back and thought about it that they, that they were basically telling his, his whole origin story from beginning to end, but in like a nonlinear fashion, you know what I mean? So it's cool. Like I'm, 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 I'm glad that they were uh, they were able to tell their story without anybody else getting involved in that, you know? Mm-hmm. So the Marvel star Brie Larson breaks silence on film's debut. So Brie Larson is finally allowed to promote the Marvels now that the actor's strike is over, and the actress hasn't wasted any time by inviting mm-hmm. people on social media to go see the latest movie from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. After 118 days of strike and a long negotiation that seemed to never end, AMPTP and SAG-AFTRA finally reached an agreement and the paralyzed productions are returning to work to avoid further delays, while many casts are already preparing to promote their films that will be released in the coming weeks. Unfortunately, the Marvels hit theaters on Friday, the same week that the strike ended, so none of its stars were able to do interviews or be present at the premiere, uh, premieres that were held before the debut. But now that the conflict between the studios and the actors union is resolved, Brie Larson took over her s- social media and shared content related to the film. The actress published an image of herself wearing the Captain Marvel costume, along with a behind the scenes video from the movie directed by Nia DaCosta in the Marvel's Captain Marvel, Monica, blah, 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 blah. Um, hmm. So I, I wanted to drop this in here because there's not really many articles going on going around about like how the Marvels is performing. Mm-hmm. It, it's weird because it feels like people are actively trying to avoid, you know, how the Marvels is doing. So I, I'm just, w- how, how much money has it made so far? I know the numbers. I know I the mean, opening what's, weekend. Well, all right, opening weekend it came out. Last Friday. Well, Thursday so you get that, you know, yes. where the drops Thursday night. It's the last yes. viewing, six point six million. 
I mean, that's not good. That ain't good at all. I believe over the weekend, it made like 46. I'm going to pull it up here. I think it made 46, and that's in the U.S. Yeah. And then, no, 47. So mm-hmm. that's close. Mm-hmm. And then I think worldwide it was like 110, 120. The movie was about 300 million. 200 million for the movie, uh, 100 million to promote it. I'm like, well, what'd you promote it? A fucking Super Bowl? Yeah. So, I mean, it'll make its money back. Sure. But you but, know they're going to blame mean, the rider strike. Oh, yeah, of course. Which is probably why some... they wanted it to come out then. Like... Yeah. Which, you know. I mean, I've I haven't gone and seen it, you know. Uh, definitely interested in peeping it whenever it you know drops on Disney Plus, so that we can you know do a a proper review of the flick. Yeah, but it like, might be great. Yeah, um, but those numbers aren't great, and it sucks that they have to kind of like really because they could have held off on release. This is a Marvel movie. They could have pushed the release date back. You know, they would have been in mm-hmm. negotiations and striking for 118 days. They could have pulled the emergency, you know, emergency stop lever and stopped this movie from dropping. They could have done that, but now they, they went ahead with Black with Widow. It. Yeah. Remember how long it took for that to come out? Yeah, I know, right? So I just, I don't know, man. We'll, of course, we'll dive into this when we watch the movie, but like, you can't force people to go to the theaters. The movie would probably have done better if it was simultaneously released in theaters and on streaming. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but like, I just, I I have a feeling that, you know, if I could sit down on Friday night and watch the Marvels in my house, then yeah, I would watched it. You know what I mean? Like I would have peeped it. It's a Marvel movie, but I just don't have interest in going to see this character in live action. At least not the way that she's being portrayed and how she's being written right now, you know? So we'll see. I, I can't wait to dive into this. Like legitimately, I cannot wait to watch this and talk about this movie. I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be a great time. So last up here, Deadpool three, Blade Captain America four, a more delayed following end of the actor strike. So um, Variety reports that Disney has decided to delay several upcoming movies, including some of the most important titles for Marvel Studios. Deadpool 3, which was set to hit theaters on May the 3rd, 2024, will take the date of Captain America Brave New World, July the 26th, 2024. Meanwhile, the fourth installment of Captain America will premiere on February the 14th, 2025, taking the date from Blade. Marshall Ali's debut as the famous vampire hunter will now happen on November the 7th, 2025, while Thunderbolts, which was going to premiere on December the 20th, 2024, has been moved to July the 25th, 2025. The only MCU film that has managed to maintain its release date is Fantastic Four, which will be released May the 2nd, 2025. The movie directed by Matt Shackman is expected to soon announce its cast, which has already been chosen but was not revealed due to the strike. Of course, there's other Disney delays like Mufasa, the Lion King. Um, What? Yeah, it says Mufasa, the Lion King was announced following the huge success of the 2019 adaptation of the 1994 animated classic and will focus on the story of Simba's father long before his son's birth and tragic death. The film is expected to delve into his reign as well as the complex relationship with his brother Scar, the villain. I'd rather see a Scar um, movie. Right. That's yeah, just right. right. So we're going to do a prequel to The Lion King? Yeah, mm. live action, apparently. Uh, and then also, Disney recently revealed other films such as Pixar's space opera, Elio! Mm-hmm. And ch- changes <laughs> to Marvel Studios schedule have been constant since the start of the strike. So new uh, modifications could arrive in the coming days when filming on Paul's productions resume. Elion. <laughs> Elion. Take me to Elion. 
<laughs> it's it's wild that they're they're naming a movie that Disney is naming a movie that. But anyway. So that was all the movie movie news. I mean, of course, with the strike ending, there's a lot of news. We're finally getting confirmations on how long things are going to be delayed for, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we'll see what happens with everything. But I'm excited about Deadpool, Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, like pretty much everything Marvel's got coming up other than the recent drop, I'm excited for, so... All right. So the strike is over. Because the last time they said it was over, it was like, psych. Well, that was the writer's strike. The actor's strike is over. Oh, okay. So now they're both over. Yeah. All the strikes are done. Special effects teams still striking? Have they? I don't. They they, have, they're, they're like, oh, they're now's our time, boys. Yeah. <sighs> it's wild. Because we had the writer's strike. Then the actors joined into the strike That's as well. Right. And yeah, so it's like we we got almost six months straight of of striking happening here. What's that? Um, what's his name? Eli Roth came on Tiger Belly. Yeah, and uh, he was promoting something. That's no, random. they were just kind of hanging out. Well, Bobby Lee did that movie, uh, Claptrap. Uh, what's it called? Borderlands. 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 Bobby Lee's in that, and while he was on there, they were they couldn't talk about it. So what he could talk about. Was he was talking about uh, the Thanksgiving movie? Yeah, and he said that what me and my buddy came up with this idea when we were kids because like November was the only month where you didn't have a scary movie. You get the scary movies in Christmas and Halloween. It was like I whenever mean, Quentin asked him if he wanted to do a trailer for the thing, he was like, "I have a perfect idea." Yeah, I already have an idea for a movie that I've had laying around. Like, he's like Eli, I'm making this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Robert Rodriguez. Bad, yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? What's weird though is he could come on there and promote that movie, but not Borderlands. Well, that movie's Just, dropping. Yeah, but still, how how can these movies come out? They're in all this shit. I don't like, know. Yeah, you know that's, what I mean? It's yeah, like, wait a minute. I thought there was a strike. I thought you couldn't talk about nothing could happen, but you're promoting this thing. Yeah. So I don't understand. It's stupid. It is. But no, we're not going to talk about it. It's like, well, just because there's a strike doesn't mean it's not happening. You filmed that Borderland movie like two years ago. Yeah. I which know. is starting to worry me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where's the trailer? Where's, you know. Oh, it had some hey, reshoots, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, they had to, you know, they had to clean we'll some see. stuff up. Cool. I hope that they. I will say that. It's good. I hope they didn't pivot the Borderlands movie to like a PG 13 movie. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's a hard R. Like, playing the game, you know, people are dying. I hope that they go that route with because they got Eli Roth. And I'm thinking. Yeah, exactly. Going yeah. You're 13 with him, are you? He might. I had a conversation with Tarantino, and Tarantino's yeah. like, to make more money, you got to make your fucking movie in PG-13, yeah. okay? You need to make clap to a lot of fucking Samuel audience. Jackson, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, motherfucker, <laughs> come over here, you know? Yeah. Open this motherfucking gate. <laughs> I'm ready for trailers. Hell yeah. Well, thank God the strike's over. Yeah. Like I didn't, we didn't know have what enough I was... content to watch. Yeah. I'm so I didn't glad know... the Tonight Show's back. Dude, I was worried about these actors. Yeah. They don't get paid near enough. They're out here. Barely doing their own by. stunts yeah like it's it's a it's a savage world out there to be an actor i'm glad that they finally got their whole ai spiel taken care of and uh you know we can get back to norm until next time yeah <laughs> yeah i'm fixing the strike well dude the day that it ended uh i did see this article a few days ago the day it ended um the fucking brothers, one of the producers from the Stranger Things called uh, David Harbour and was like, yo, so you're going to get on an airplane tomorrow and we're going to be filming in Atlanta. Like, Hell we're yeah. ready to go. So they like worked really, on all oh, the whole time, dude. There's gonna, yeah. We're going to get all that good, like, stuff that got extra, you know. Yeah, extra treatment. Yeah, because they already had an idea. Oh, yeah. And it's like, you're not just sitting around playing golf or D&D &D or something during this strike. You're really, I mean, how long was it? Six months? 
Yeah, it was like a hundred. Yeah, it was three to four months, maybe longer. I don't know. It was exactly. Like six. But I mean, hey, I'm glad that they were working the whole time. Dude, the instead. day it ended, they're like, we're ready to film. Like, drafts on an airplane. Yeah. We're finished. Dude, I can't wait for this last season of Strange Things. The reason I brought that up is because this has a uh, old Billy Bobby Brown in it. Uh, I don't know what this is. I mean, we'll see. Y'all ready? I'm ready. You good, Trev? Yeah. Still going to play? Oh, not that part. Mm hmm. Look at those formations. Yeah. I saw some videos of dudes like cave diving. And anytime they see a formation, dude, they'd be like, whoa. Is it like the train guy? Yeah. Oh, no. (laughs) That dude's on a whole other level. (laughs) Still don't know what's going on here. She's trapped. In a land of Mordor. Oh, God. That's creepy. Well, you got to find a dragon. Okay. What's that based on? Nothing. Yeah. Dragon Slayer. Yeah. Look, I'm just going to say this about Millie Bobby Brown. It's hard to not see her as a tomboy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... With her playing, like, that Sherlock Holmes series Mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. Like, it's just hard to not see her as a tomboy. So it it makes those roles that she takes where she's not playing a tomboy-type character hard to, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, and she's 11. Yeah, exactly. She's been 11 since she was, like, 11. Yeah, so it's it's really hard to kind of, you know, but anyway... Like, I think she's going to be a great actress. I think she's going to continue to be a great actress, of course. But, like, there hasn't been anything else that's came out that she's been in that's, like, as good as Stranger Things, things good. Yeah. yeah. To take you to be the a next. hard. Yeah. She'll be chasing that her whole career. Like, oh, yeah. She might get yeah. it, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll see, though. So we got Garfield. Is this the Chris uh, mm-hmm. Pratt? Okay, is this, I, the the internet's not on fire, so it must not be bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> they they were pissed the last time, then they saw that Mario movie and was like, all right, I mean. Yeah, he can play Mario, it's He fine. can make him play Mario, all right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Fuck it, let him play Garfield. All right, here we go. It's going to be hard to beat Bill Murray, though, you know? Yeah. For real. Oh my God. We're getting a little origin here. Yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, it's pizza. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Oh, he's lonely. Most restaurants lock their windows. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I like how he just shakes his head. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god he's gonna push him yeah All right, we're going on an adventure here. Yeah. I'm down for that. What's happening? So the trailer, trailer recap. Reverse? Oh. So Oh, submit a video. Okay. All right, I'm gonna. That's fixing to say. I was like, we got the pre-trailer. Now are we gonna have the post-trailer roundup? All right. It don't look bad. No. I'm down. Oh. Back. Our way. first Avatar trailer. Yeah. This is Avatar? the series, right? Yeah. It's a Netflix series. I think that's the issue. They need more time. Well, I don't know if it could be done in a. Well, I watched that first one. Remember the movie they did? M. Mm -hmm. Night Shyamalan, they were on like a beach. Everybody was getting old. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird. <laughs> I'm excited to peep this avatar, though. All right. Is, is this the. This is the James Cameron one, right? He made the water one. This yeah. is the air one, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> Loki shows up. He's like, did someone say time? time? After time. <laughs> it looks great. Oh, shit. Is that Olivia Munn? It's not, right, but... Hell yeah. What the fuck is that thing? It's the thing from Never Ending Story. Fucking, uh. <laughs> oh, the wild. Betray you? The, 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 what is that? The wild things? The. Oh, where the wild things roam? <laughs> it looks like one of those things. <laughs> Was it Falcor? Falcor, yeah. It looks good. Yeah. And like, for real, I don't know how, I mean, everybody kind of hated on that last Airbender movie. I remember sitting there watching it and me and Travis just kind of made fun of it the whole time. Like, it was background noise. Yeah. But like, nothing about it made me want to watch it again. Yeah. You know. Well, maybe that'll be, maybe that one will be better, you know? Yeah. Getting some time to flesh everything out. Yeah. It does look cool. Yeah. For shizzle. Masters yeah, we, of the air. Yeah, we got some what's his name? Uh we'll do the play to Elvis. Austin Butler. Oh. Still got the summer game of mine. 
Does he? It's even deeper now. Okay, yeah. okay. Just making sure nobody has a, a commercial. Ad. No. Okay. Yeah, watch. He said something at the beginning. <laughs> Let's rack him up and knock him down. Like, he's a different person now. Yeah, that's what Elvis will do to you. We play Elvis, man. Come on, man. It's not all weird. I think it added to his acting. Yeah. Like, I like the new Tex. Yeah. Tex, Rex. Resources. Oh. For real. Like. Dude, fuck that. For real. Like dog fighting? Like that? Just war in general. Yeah. You know, like. We sent kids into that. Yeah. It's like, you're not 21. You can't drink, but you can get in this fucking airplane and go over here and die. This looks like fucking, ooh, what a line. Yeah. Looks good. It does. I like a good dog fight movie. Not the Michael Vick kind of dog fight either. Yeah. Whoa, what a pull. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Uh, that cabinet to door for that. Yeah, and then came back and played the NFL, and then played again. And everybody's yeah. like, "All right, he did his time." Yeah, it's like, dude, he was killing dogs. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a pull, you know. But hey, sometimes you got it. There's going to be somebody listening to this at some point. It's going to be like, who's Michael Vick? Yeah. And what did he do? Uh, he to be there. Yeah. Somebody asked a... me the other day, if, like, how'd the baseball go? I guess it was the World Series or something. I was like, I said, dude, I haven't watched baseball since Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa were trying to get the most home runs. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Like, if y'all remember that. Early like, 2000. Yeah. yeah. Early 2001. Mark McGuire's neck looked like my leg, like my thigh, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah. Does not look that anymore. Like, how many steroids? All oh, of them. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> All he doesn't like steroids. horse steroids. Like, <laughs> for real. He's like, main he and tail crack works a for your hair. baseball, though. Like, yeah, right. They were like, where'd the ball go? He's like, he knocked it out of the park and into the next stadium. Yeah. I think it's in somebody's windshield. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, Hakusho, Hakusho. This kind of looks. What little okay, bit I saw of it, I just had to make sure it was sure? real. Kind of reminds me of like, like Hero. I never watched I mean, Hero, he, he, but he, it kind of he, looks. Yeah. You know, we'll okay. see. This a foreign. Okay, I think this so is based off an anime. Probably. So that's him. Japanese for sure. Mm. The fuck is it in his mouth? I don't know. That's one of those. Just pop. Uh, mm. Pacifier suckers. Pop <laughs> ring thing. Yeah. Ring pop. Yeah, that's it. Ring pop.
What the fuck? The fuck is that? <laughs> Talking about having a monkey on your bag. Man, this shit looks epic. I mean. Fucking Johnny Cage over here. That ain't nothing like Hero. I mean, that looks wild. Not as wild as this. Oh, nah, wait, <laughs> how the Gringo stole Christmas? George Lopez. A little comedy in here, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Okay, I mean, okay. I have a feeling it's gonna be a dud, but has George Lopez stooped that low? No comment. <laughs> Is he everybody got that? Are we good? Oh, I'm ready. And then put an ad on this. Wow. Funny idea. Kind of meet the Fockers. Mm. He's a cholo too. He buttons his thing up all the way. Yeah. Gotta stay sober. What I don't I don't think I've ever heard of that, dude. For this to be Lionsgate, it looks very Direct low budget. Lifetime. Yeah, like it. Well, like it's shot in the front of a screen or something like. Yeah. Oh look. This is like a soap opera, dude. Look at this. Oh, hell no. Oh, God. Was it soccer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they should have went a little harder. Yeah, like. I mean, we're podlocked, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. George Lopez. No ads. No way. No. The brother's son. Yeah. Even though it's a, it's a teaser, but it looks interesting. the fuck is happening <laughs> she was like an assassin or i don't know 
Oh, we got some here. I don't have an ad. I have an ad. Okay. I'm good. Skip it. So I remember Trav brought this up. A the three back. body problem? Yeah, there's like a foreign version. Mm -hmm. This is the U.S. trailer. Oh. Okay. Okay. Apparently it's a pretty big show. Or it's there's some books too. Was it a show, Trav? <clears throat> Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a show uh, based on a uh, trilogy. It's supposed to be huge. Yeah, Ouge. it's supposed to be huge. It's supposed to be some cool sci-fi shit going on. It's got Sam in it from uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, Sam. It's, uh, a, it's it's a story inspired by um, uh, stuff based on the Fermi paradox. Oh, okay. Well, let's get Fermi with it. Oh, the onion knot? Oh. Okay. Oculus Roof. <laughs> it's lost a lot of weight yeah that tends to happen yeah you look cash whoa looks that's her underwear no comment <laughs> Why is he dressed like that? Yeah, she can't hear you. <laughs> oh, that's a real reaction. What's that? Probably don't touch that. He felt it crawl in his hand. Damn. Doesn't look bad. So there's not even a fucking headphone jack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Rebel Moon? Ooh. Yeah, dude, dude. People are fucking like going through the roof for this. I'm excited. December, right? Yeah. yeah, December 25th, right? <sighs> Christmas Day? Christmas can't come fast enough. Yeah, for real, right? All right. No ads? No. Because it's random about that. Sorry. I wish I could full screen, full screen it. Mm. Dude, it's a dude from the stream, and he's bald. Nazis. Damn. Is that Harvey Cattell? No way. Oh, fuck.
Oh shit. <laughs> Obviously. Okay. Damn. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> that scared that me. That person came out of nowhere. It yeah. sounded like someone punched you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Like, they, like, they just like, fuck you, Trey. Yeah. <laughs> Punch mm. you in the back of the head. <laughs> this trailer did it. <laughs> oh, man. I love this because he's just like, let's get weird. This looks amazing. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cannot wait. I give that a Napoleon Dynamite. Yes. 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 Eat your food, Tana. <laughs> I got to add. Me too. Is it a rice? Somebody cook on a Target. Puttshack.com. Yeah. All right, Ghostbusters. Wee, I haven't wee, watched this. Wee. I haven't watched this trailer, by the way. Of, uh, on Twitter. I mean, Twitter. On X. I'm not calling it that. <laughs> Expect to saw, see the Twin Towers there. It's like, this is the 80s? Oh. Looks like a hurricane. A ghost hurricane. A hurricane? Oh. Don't give sci fi any ideas. <laughs> ghost NATO comes through. Are you the key master? That sounds like a... Uh... Oh. Everybody's back. That's Doctor Who as fuck. <laughs> That's that dude from Game of Thrones. Yeah, the Wild Walker. Yeah. <laughs> I think Doesn't Rick look... Moranis might show up in that, dude. I hope so. They've already done the thing where they had everybody come back. Yeah. And they did the holdout, so you didn't know if they were going to be there. Yeah. And he's the only one that didn't. That'd be awesome if he makes a... Yes. I'm a, I mean, I'm excited for it. It looks great. You can't. They can't go wrong with Paul Walker. Not Paul Walker. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. The whole Paul Walker thing went wrong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no ad, we good. I'm good. La Salam. Wyland. Bad. Use headphones. It's one of those slap contests. 
<laughs> Dude, I was hoping it was. Was this cricket? Yeah. This is not just a game uh -oh. of war. Here come the cops. Oh. Whoa. All right. I want a fast so bad. Damn. Oh, hell yeah. Oh. Team wipe. Dude, the tone shifts in these yeah. trailers are just crazy. Like, huh? what? Man, I'm down to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that was short. Actually. Yeah. I had I'm, a longer I'm, one. It was almost like three minutes, but I was like, man, I really want to watch this one because it's just like, just what? Like, I'm used to them being like three minutes, four minutes, three to five. Yeah. 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 Short film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Entire yeah. short film. Well, that's the end of the road, fellas. Yeah. Next week, all we've got is uh, Return of the King. Oh, I'm excited. Return of the King once, once again. again. <laughs> He's like, once again. Oh, yeah, it's fucking. Gollum. Yeah. Gollum. Gollum. I was going to cough that Gollum up already. Yeah. Gollum. For real. Gollum. Like, like, dude, get it up. You need, here's some water. You know what yeah. you need is a warm shower yeah. to break that yeah. Gollum up in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Love it. From now on, when I got a rough cough, I'm it's Just my golem acting up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice, man. You got, I got a Nolan back here, and I got my golem. <laughs> Such a great character, though, yeah, man. Like on program. See, hobbits is yeah. the oxies. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Can I have a fucking bit of bread? You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that dude popped up with those, you know, those, those, those pointy ears. Yeah, his yeah. face is right in the middle of the screen. <laughs> what can we eat them? Yeah, <laughs> that's some meat. It's fresh. <laughs> they were like, "No, all right." There's a little infighting, me. you know. Yeah. Oh, they were gonna eat him. He's like, "No, these got to go back." Yeah, Sormon wants them alive. And unscathed. Yeah. We'll bring half yeah. of them back. Yeah, his feet. You know? <laughs> I think he said legs. Yeah. He doesn't eat his legs. Oh, yeah. The checks on the mouth. Yeah. Praise the flag. <laughs>